Hey everybody, welcome back to When Harry Met Board Games. I am Harry. And before we go any further, please make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe to our channel if you're interested in some more board game related content. Today we're going to be playing through the game of Herbaceous, a flavorful, flavorful game designed by Steve Finn, Eduardo Baraf, and Beth Sobel. Now, Herbaceous plays from one through four players, but today we're going to be playing a solo game. This game comes with an official solo variant, and it's a very quick experience. This is definitely a filler game. Even with multiple people, this game plays very quickly, but even more so as a solo experience. So first of all, let's explain the, the setup. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to grab the deck of herb cards, which consists of 72 cards. You're going to shuffle it up, and you're going to remove 36 cards from the game in the solo version of the game. You're going to set up your biscuit card here, which is a bonus of five points. And I'll explain later how you can win those five points. You're going to have this private garden banner. And you're going to place it somewhere in the middle of the table to separate yourself, your private garden, which you're going to be building along the way, from the community garden, which is a communal garden that all players, in this case is only one player, but in a multiple player game, all players can draft cards from the community garden as opposed to your private garden which is a garden where only you can draft cards from as a matter of fact i'm actually not too sure about that i think i think actually players can draft cards from your private garden they could only draft cards from one person's private private garden per turn but i'll explain that shortly so first of all to start the game we need to discard one card just to create a discard pile and you can see one of the herbs here, which is rosemary. And that's the discard pile. And now you're going to create a start up um, community community uh, garden. You're going to start up by adding two, two herbs to the community garden. And we have a bay and a sage here. And then you're going to start up the game with three herbs in your own personal garden. We have tarragon, we have chive, and we have rosemary again. So let me take this opportunity real quick. You see chive. Chive is one of three herbs in this game. Most uh, most uh, herbs have a, I guess, a set of maybe nine, I think it is, cards within the deck. But chive is one of three herbs that only has three cards, so they're rare. And they're numbered from one, two, and three. I believe one of them, one of the other ones is um, Mint. I don't remember at the moment which is the third one, but I'm sure it'll come out. So they're numbered from one to three. So there's three Chives, which is number two. There's three Mints, which I believe is numbered one. And there's three of another herb that's numbered number three. And the way this works is if you want to get the bonus five points from the Biscuit, if you're the first player... Um, to score a glass jar with a one, a two, and a three herb in it, then you gain these five points. And that brings us to the jars. We have four different types of jars that we're trying to fill up throughout the course of the game as we pot some of these herbs. And once all players are can no longer pot anymore, they've filled up all their pots, the game comes to an end, or if the deck runs out, whichever comes first. So we have the glass jar, which we'll start off with here, which for the glass jar, you can just, um, you can uh, you pot any three cards. There's no restrictions here. You can grab any three cards and you can pot them. And you score according to how many cards you pot. But if the three cards happen to be the one, the two, and the three uh, herbs, then you're going to gain the bonus from the biscuit you also have this jar here which all of these jars have a name right here you have the this is called the wooden planter and or the wooden planter pot these are all pots and the way the wooden planter scores for you is you're going to score for all the different herbs so you would check here on the track and if you potted seven different types of herbs here you're going to get 14 right then we have the large pot. And for the large pot, you need to pot all identical. And if you get seven of a kind, you would score 22 points. And then finally, you have the small pot. 
And for this small pot, you need different pairs of identical herbs. And if you can grab 12 cards, which represent six different pairs, then you can score 18 points. And again, it shows you on the track how much you would score if you um, pot less cards. So those are the four pots that you're trying to fill. Now we will proceed with the actual game. So the first thing you could do on, in a game is you can pot. In a multiple player game, on your first turn, you cannot pot. You can only move on to the second phase of the turn, which is um, drafting the cards and putting them into the respective gardens. Now, with um, a solo game, you are allowed to pot on your very first turn. So I would look at this, I would survey these cards. I cannot grab from the discard pile, but I can grab from the community garden or the private garden. And honestly speaking, I am not too interested in any of these. So I am going to let the, um, I am going to draft cards from here and grow the supply. So first, you get to, in a regular game, you get to draw twice. One at a time. And then you must make the decision at that moment of whether you want to add that card to the community garden or to, the, to your private garden. However, once you've made a decision, the second card you will draw, you have no decision. You have to put it on the opposite garden that you did not pick. In a solo game, you have three options. You get to draw three cards. One of them will be discarded. One of them will join the community garden. And one of them will join the private garden. And again, you must make that decision one at a time. It reminds me of a very neat mechanism from a game called Merchants of Amsterdam by Rainer Knizia, which I really, really appreciate it. I appreciate the tension of having to make these decisions one at a time and wishing you had foresight as to what would the next card would be. But what you do have is you have process of elimination, right? You use probability to try to decipher what's going to come out next. So I'm going to draw these three cards and make these decisions one at a time. So first off, I have a deal. So I'm actually going to keep the deal somewhere because it is a different type of herb from the ones that are here. And I'm going to put it in my community garden here. Then I'm going to draw another card. Here's saffron. I cannot put this in my garden anymore, my private garden. I could either discard this or put it in the private garden, and, uh, in the community garden. And I'm actually going to choose to put it in the community garden because, again, it's a different herb from the ones that are out on display. And now this next card must be discarded. And it was another saffron, and I'm okay with that. Saffron. Sorry, I pronounced that <laughs> incorrectly. For any herbalists out there, saffron. All right. So we are done with this first round, and now we will proceed to the next round. Now keep in mind a very important rule, which adds tension, or else this game would be a piece of cake. In the solo variant, to kind of create that tension that would be created by the idea of other players who might take the cards you're interested in, once the community garden ever reaches a fifth card, all of the cards are immediately discarded. So you cannot allow the community garden to go over four Unless there's nothing there that you're interested in. Because again, they would all be discarded. So you probably want to pop cards before the garden gets to five. So right now, we're not a threat at that. The next card is only going to put it at um, four. So um, I'm going to now, we move to the next turn. The first thing I decide before I draft cards again is to pop cards. And I could do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different types of cards. Which for this garden here, um, the wooden planter, that is the maximum amount that I could score for anyways. Even though there's a few other gardens, I cannot score for more than that. However, I do have this chive here that I might want to keep around. So in, in hindsight or looking forward, projecting forward, I probably want to find a way to keep this chive here available. Because again, there's only three chives in all the deck. And I shuffled out 36 cards, so it's possible that the other two chives aren't even in the game. So I'm actually not going to draft right now. I'm not going to pot anything right now. I'm just going to proceed to add into the different uh, gardens. And I have chive again, which I'm just going to keep right here. And that makes my decision about getting chive in the future a lot easier now that I know there's another chive. Um, or should I discard this? That's a tough one. This is a tough one. I might regret this. I'm going to keep the chive here. I'm going to keep it here. Okay. Then we have Sage here. Okay. So Sage is a multiple of one already. I'm going to discard the Sage. 
And I'm going to draw the next one. And this one must be played in the community garden. And I got another bay. So I'm leaving the bay right there. Okay. All right. And now we are done with this turn. We proceed to the next turn. And again, I must make the decision of whether or not I want to pot. And I do. Because after I draft an additional card to the community garden, it will be the fifth card and it will trigger all of these other cards getting discarded and i don't want that to happen so instead i'm gonna grab seven different types so i've got the chive here the dill right here i've got the tarragon right here i've got the rosemary right there i've got the bay i've got the saffron and i've got the sage and that is one two three four five six seven different herbs and i will pop them I will slide them under the card on the line that it corresponds with. So I'll put it under the seven to indicate that I am collecting or scoring this set of seven cards for 14 points at the end of the game. All right. And now we will proceed to the drafting here. I've got one card here. It's mint. Mint is one of the cards I told you about, one of the three unique herbs. That if I pot in my glass pot or my glass jar, I will score the five bonus points of the biscuit. So I'm going to keep the mint. And I'm going to keep it here in my garden. That way it has no threat of ever disappearing. I'm going to draw the next card. I've got saffron here. It cannot be added to the private garden. I'm actually going to choose to discard this and hope that something good is here. Either a bay or the number three herb. And we've got another saffron. So I guess it was destiny for saffron. Okay. So I'm going to choose to not pop anything here and move on. Uh, well, I'm moving on to the next round. And I'm going to choose to not pop anything. And I'm going to proceed to the next drafting phase. And here we have lavender. Lavender. I've already got the different types. So that's not really important to me. Um, I'm going to discard this. And then the next one I have is Saffron. So I'm going to keep Saffron right here because this might be helpful to me in getting the different pairs, right? Because I still have to get that the or, or the same as the, uh, the large pot, which all has to be identical herbs. And if I get a set of identical herbs, that could be very helpful. So I'm going to keep that there. And then my final card must be played in the private garden because I've already discarded and I've already contributed to the community garden. So... Here we go, a bay card. So that gives me options. I could also do the um, the small pot and do pairs, right? Because I've already got two pairs. Okay, so I'm not going to do that. There's still a good amount of deck left to play with. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to add to the pot. I'm going to add to the to the gardens. So here we go. I've got dill here. Dill, hmm. Oh, I'm going to make a tough decision of discarding this. Here I got Rosemary again. Okay, so with Rosemary, I will add it. Oh, I'm going to add it right here. And then finally, this one must go in my private garden. Saffron yet again. Okay. And now we move on to the next turn, and I have to pop something. So I could either choose to grab this pair of bay and this pair of saffron and put it in my small pot. That would be four cards. It would give me eight points. Or I can get these three of a kind saffron right here and get 10 points, right? And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab these three saffron here. Because remember, I, I have the tense decision to make because the next card that gets drafted would be the fifth one. And then they would all get discarded anyhow. So I don't want to do that. And very important, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, when you're drafting... Cards, you could always draft, when you're potting cards, you could always choose um, any amount of cards from the community garden and cards from one other player's private garden. So in a solo game, yours is the only private garden you could choose from. But in a multiple player game, you have different options of players that you could choose from, right? So I'm going to grab these three saffron. I'm going to pot them. And I'm going to put them right here. These are three different cards. So that's going to score me 10 more points at the end of the game. Okay. And now we will draft these cards again. I've got another bay. This is my third bay. Ooh, you know what? No, no, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I put these here in different types. Oh, yeah. This is my third bay, but that's irrelevant because I already did the, the different types one. Okay, so I'm going to put this. Ugh, I'm going to put this here. Doesn't really matter. I'm going to put this here. 
And then we've got the dill. The dill insists on coming out, but I'm discarding it because I'm hoping for that number three, baby. And I've got another mint. What good will that do me? Okay. All right. Now we move on to yet another round. Okay, here we go. Woo! I drafted yet another mint. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to keep the mint here. I'm going to draw the next card here. And it's Tarragon. And I'm going to discard Tarragon because Tarragon is not doing anything for me right now. And I'll draft this card. And it's Rosemary. And that's exactly what I was hoping for. Something that I already had a pair for. All right. So now we proceed to the next round. And again, the first thing I get to do is I get to pop. And I'm going to do three different pairs because I have a pair of Bay right here. And I'm going to get rid of it from the community garden to create more space. I do have one here on my private garden, but that's fine. And I'm going to grab two mints. Now that I have three mints, two of these are obsolete and I can grab them. And I could grab these two rosemaries. And that is three different pairs that I will be potting in my small pot. And that is six cards in total. I put it down here to indicate that I'll be scoring 12 more points at the end of the game. All right. So this game is coming down to crunch time. And I really am hoping and I've been banking on getting that number three card, right? So now let me let me uh, re re reiterate the end game trigger is either when you run out of these cards or when you can no longer pot cards because you've potted all four. So if at the moment of the um, drafting card phase, phase number two in the turn order, there are no cards for you to be able to draft from, then you've lost. So you've got that one last opportunity to pop cards right after you've run out of the deck, after you've exhausted the deck. So I got to keep an eye on the deck and see what I could do. All right, so I am not potting anything. I will be drafting the first card. This is Saffron, which is irrelevant for my purposes, so I will discard this. And then we have Sage. Okay, this is also irrelevant for my purposes. And then we have Saffron again. All righties. So now we will move on to the next round. Again, I'm not potting anything because I'm really banking on that three. And we've got Rosemary again. And we've got Sage again. And we've got Chive, the number two card again, which I don't need. Okay. And we'll proceed. And again, I am not going to pot. And I believe this is going to be my last opportunity to draft. So if none of these three cards here are the number three herb, I'm not going to get these five points, and I'm just going to have to settle for any three cards to pot in my glass jar. So here's the first card. It's the dill again. You know how many of these come out? There's a lot of dill. Okay, so dill is gone. And the next card is the number three, Thyme. That's exactly the one I was looking for, and I'll add it to the community garden. And then finally, Rosemary, which I'll add to mine. It's going to be my final turn. And I'm going to pot the number one mint, the number two chive, and the number three thyme. And these will all be potted in my glass jar, putting it right here under the three cards to indicate that I'm going to score six more points at the end of the game. Plus, I gain the biscuit for being the first player, or in a solo game, the only player, to... Um, Score a glass jar with the one, the two, and the three. So I will add up my total points. I scored 14. Um, here I scored 10. That's 24. Here I scored 12. That's 36. Here I scored six more. That's 42. Plus the bonus five points is 47. And according to this little leaflet here on the solo variant rules, 47 to 51 I am a talented gardener. I am not quite yet a professional herbalist, and I am not a true green thumb harvester, but I am a talented gardener, which is four along the scale. So that's that's pretty good. I've, I've improved on past scoring uh, experiences. So that right there, folks, is how you play um, Herbaceous uh, solo. Again, there's a, a multiplayer version as well, and I think the multiplayer version adds more of attention because you have actual intelligent human beings making decisions that counter your decisions and add to these very tense moments of when do I pot, when do I draft, where do I draft. So that is it, folks. This is the game Herbaceous. If it looks interesting to you, maybe you want to give it a try. Maybe you might even want to give it a buy. 
Thank you so much for watching us here at When Harry Met Board Games. I am Harry, and please don't forget to hit the like button down below and subscribe to our channel if you're interested in some more board game-related content. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye.